What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So I recorded this video already, so this is probably gonna be less in depth because um, everything that I went through, it was a longer video. I'm hoping that I can get through a lot of it in a shorter period of time, but I'm gonna be talking about AMC in this video. I will make a video about GME because I feel like I do need to make something there, especially when it comes to people that are interested in that, that subscribe to me because they're interested in GameStop. So before I get started, please hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos like this one and make sure that you get your free stocks with Weeble down below. But I wanted to talk about AMC here because first let's go ahead and look into the volume. I feel like the volume is definitely a really big indicator exactly to what is going to happen. Now the problem is, is that when you do look at the volume, you can say that, um, yeah, volume is a large indicator of what could happen, but it also could be to the negative side. So you see a lot of you know positivity you know when it comes to having a 1.2 billion um, you know, volume day versus a you know, 39 million volume day. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about that because you look at the volume that we've seen um, yesterday, it was 165 million um, shares that were sold back and forth, you know, bought, sold back and forth. And you see it's to the good. You can see that we had 165 million, majority of it was you know, to the green. Um, increasing the price, which is definitely a great thing. So that's what I mean. We need to see great volume when it comes to AMC. Um, 165 million is still not where I think it could be or where it should be when it comes to this stock, especially being at a low price like this. It should be, you know, 200 million, somewhere around 200 million to where we can increase that price quite a bit um, and have these large swings, whether it's positive or negative, we can see 200 million or 300 billion um, shares go back and forth. So this is definitely a great indicator to why we've seen a good day today, a lot of movement. So uh, that's what I wanted to call out first. But as you start to look into a lot of the data, you start to look into what happened today. If you weren't familiar with what happened today, it looked really good, right? Right from the start, we've seen an increase. Um, you could see that during the uh, pre-market um, it was basically up a little bit. It wasn't up a ton. And then towards the end of the pre-market, it started to increase and continued uh, throughout the, the open. So you've seen that increase. And then it started to come back a little bit to where everybody was like, here we go. Uh, my initial thought was um, that when you see an increase that does you know rapidly increase, and it's not a crazy rapid increase, it just passed that $6 mark that we really wanted to pass, um, you're going to see a decrease. You're going to see people sell off, right? But all of this positivity is showing how much buying power we really had. But to look at it, did we really have that much buying power? Because as I was looking into this, as I was going through the day, I was looking at the buy volume to, um, compared to the sell volume. The sell volume always came in, you know, two times higher than what the buy volume was. Now, I didn't understand exactly why that was. Maybe it was because people were doing these market orders rather than limit orders. So they didn't put anything through as something being filled at $6 and um, I don't know, 22 cents or whatever it is. So seeing a number of buy orders come in there, but we've seen a market order saying, fill me at whatever price I can get to. So it was kind of spread evenly. That could be a possibility. Or we're seeing the reversal of some sort of manipulation here. So all that manipulation that we've seen with the downhill uh, train that we did see, with no type of positivity, especially with the getting to lower and lower prices, made no sense to anybody. Uh, people were holding so many shares, but the price was still going down. All that manipulation might be you know, starting to burst. It might be starting to reverse a little bit. And that may be what we're seeing here. Um, and I don't know what that manipulation actually is. So seeing the buy volume that's lower, um, that makes me think that that's the reason why. But a lot of people brought to my attention and I did see some news about um, the fact that they're going to be opening up theaters in New York. But then it started to get my you know, uh, brain rolling and started to get it thinking. And um, I was just like, well, what if this is a way to cover up what's actually happening? And this is all speculation here. What if it's a way to cover up the reversal of manipulation by saying, Oh, well, the reason why the stock price increased by 15% and then 5% in the after hours market is because um, the theaters are opening up. You know, you're kind of trying to hide what the real, you know, the real thing that happened. So that could be a possibility. I don't know. Um, this is just speculation in my part, but it doesn't make sense because if you did see 
actual people get interested, they would find their entry point and they would put in a lot of these buy orders. Um, and even to the point to where people were saying that their buy orders could not be filled because I guess we're holding so many shares that some of these um, some of these clearing houses could not actually fill the orders completely. So that could be a possibility from what I heard, but there's a lot of speculation here um, on my part, on everybody's part, and it doesn't really make sense. It goes beyond just news. Um, there's a little bit more that we see here, and that's why I'm seeing you know a 15% jump, you know a 5% jump in the after hours. At one point, I think it was 10%, it jumped up to uh, what seven dollars and twenty five cents at one point, and that's crazy. I mean, it was breaking um, sell walls without any actual buy walls that we've seen here. This cat is going crazy. I don't know what she's doing, but she's doing something. Um, she's chasing her own hair, apparently. <clears throat> but yeah, it's like she had catnip. I don't understand it. <clears throat> Seriously, lady, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, as we look into AMC, we could see that it was great to see all of this positivity. I was really happy to see that right from the start. And I didn't say that, oh, well, now here we go. It's going downhill. You know, I kind of knew that we would see a decrease, not to that level. I thought that maybe it would stop here and then start to increase a little bit more. But we did see that increase that I was hoping for. And this wide range candle bar um, or candlestick really set it all off. Um, and then obviously through the after hours market, people got really interested. And then obviously it started to taper off a little bit and increase at the end. <clears throat> so at the end of the after hours market, I don't know what's going on with this, this cat really. Um, we could see it's at $6 and 89 cents right at that $7 mark. And like I said, it was breaking a lot of barriers that we thought, you know, it, it didn't make sense why they were getting past, you know, $6, $6.22, $7. Don't know why I was breaking these barriers, but I'm happy that it was, you know, but that's what I'm seeing with this. And the fact that we are seeing um, a separation here. So let's go ahead and add the 15 moving average. The fact that we are seeing this separation here from the 15 moving average um, compared to the uh, 200 EMA. Um, you're seeing the separation, the wider separation as time goes on. Hopefully in the pre-market, we see more of that continue. And it's quite possible that we may see a gap up with all the attention that we did receive for you know this position, having 160 plus million shares go back and forth. You might see a gap up um, towards the, the pre-market for tomorrow. And if we do, if it's something that you know, we gap up and we open at nine, ten dollars, eight, nine, ten dollars, then you're definitely going to see people that want to sell off a little bit to recognize some profits or recognize, you know, um, the fact that they may not get up to that point ever again, because that's that's how people feel. You know, once they start increasing after a number of days of uh, decreasing of uh, staying flat, then they're going to sell off whenever they get closer to the break even. And I understand that completely. You know, um, the only thing is that you're not giving it enough um, chance to grow here, especially if you had a strategy to hold it on to um, hold on to it for a long period of time. Um, recognize your profits because I do see this as a ten or fifteen dollar stock, um, and with the potential of pushing up to twenty dollars. Now, <clears throat> um, what people don't understand is they think that this is crazy to get up to seventy five or seven dollars and twenty five cents that we should sell off at this point. But if you look at history, if we go back a year, we look at a year here, um, we're gonna see before the pandemic, you know, pre-pandemic, let you know, uh, February, right? You know, basically a full year, February, you can see that we were at that, you know, $7 mark, you know, had a, had uh, lows of $7.06, had highs of $7.44. You're at the $7 mark, it was up higher than that, $10. Yes, it was decreasing. People weren't going to a lot of theaters, but the pandemic is something that really hit it hard. You know, right where you started to see everything shift, you've seen people not go to movie theaters, you've seen things close down. That's where things started to shift here. So you've seen it hit a low of, you know, $2, right? And then it started to increase and start to fluctuate and hit a ultimate low of $1.91 to where you've seen it rapidly increase from there which is definitely a great deal to see it increase to, you know, $2. But 
you can see that the stock was actually valued at more pre pandemic and people are saying that, you know, it was valued at less. It was valued at $2 or whatever. This is not pre pandemic. This is during the pandemic, during literally the worst part of the pandemic. This is the whole entire, you know, once we get into December, January to where things started surging again, but you obviously seen a lot of people get interested in this um, because they started really shorting the position to hopefully bankrupt the company. That's what they wanted to do. Um, but we wouldn't let that happen and we saved the company and now it's valued at a lot more, a 10 to $15 stock. So without talking your ear off, that's where I feel like it is. I feel like the potential of it is 10 to $15. Um, long term, um, well, actually, right now, I feel like it should be ten to fifteen dollars. Um, as it starts to get um, into future months, when it starts to revamp things, reopen, do things a different way, maybe hire some new people, change the processes up, yeah, it can be valued at a lot more. But I do feel like it is a ten to fifteen dollar stock at minimum right now, especially with all the attention. So, with all the people that are holding it, expect this price to um, increase. I think that it's going to get to 10 soon um, and whether it gets to 15, um, you know, I guess not too long after that will be good, but um, it is looking like a great position and I'm really happy that I am holding it, that I'm holding 1700 shares because I think it has more potential than what GameStop has right now because GameStop did squeeze already. Um, it still has a couple of pops in it. I still believe in it. I still have a bet going on um, to where... I believe it's going to get above 100 before March. That was my bet. That it was going to get above 100. And if it does, then I get a share of AMC from somebody. And if it doesn't, then I have to give up a share of AMC. And I'm okay with that. <clears throat> but I'm happy to say that I do believe that GME is going to have a couple of pops. But AMC is what we're talking about here. I love the positivity. I love what's happening. We have to wait for the pre-market to know exactly what's um, going on. And if we do see a gap up, that will be absolutely phenomenal. But um, yeah, let's wait and see. Um, obviously, when this is posted, we're, you're going to be able to see exactly what happened um, from the beginning of the pre-market till uh, when this is posted. So uh, hopefully it's some positivity. If it's not, then uh, oh well, we'll continue to uh, watch this as it slowly increases. Because that's the overall thought is that's going to slowly increase. But with manipulation, with partnering any reversal of manipulation with um, good news and also with a lot of buying power or potential, potentially a lot of buying power because you know we're holding a lot of positions, um, I think that this could increase um, quite rapidly. Um, it definitely has the potential without any further manipulation. So let me know what you think about it. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the notification bell for more videos like this one. Also, check out the links down below for Weeble, my store, um, you know, wallets, whatever, YouTube equipment, all of that stuff. If you're interested in creating your own YouTube channel, it basically costs nothing, nothing to start. But um, yeah, make sure you get your free stocks with Weeble down below. All you have to do is click the link, sign up, deposit $100, and you'll get your free stocks. But I'm going to get out of here and I'll catch you guys in the next one.